It's the story that I heard some time ago about a, a father and his son. Business had really required a lot from him, and the son felt some neglect. Finally, the boy goes off to college, and one day they were out walking in their city, and there was a used car, or a car lot, I should say. That is what I want for my college graduation present. The day came that the son graduated from college, and the father asked him to come into his study, and he said, this is my graduation present to you. He unwrapped the gift and took the lid off of the box, and inside was a Bible. It was absolutely what he did not want and left that mansion of his dad. The man became successful and met a beautiful girl, married her, did not invite the father to the wedding, had a child, did not inform the father. But by that second child, something happened to the son and he began to desire to have his dad back in his life. So he began to reach out and build relationship and they planned a trip. The father had a massive heart attack and died suddenly. And he happened to go into his dad's office, the last place where he saw his dad alive. And he walked into that office. There was that Bible with his name on it. It's when he went to open it, it had a bookmarker in it. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Suddenly a key fell out of the Bible. He went to the garage. The and he tore the cover off. There was that convertible. And I'm preaching today that we serve a heavenly father who many times sends his children strangely wrapped gifts. We ask God for things. Many times we ask him and God sends what we ask him for but it comes in strangely wrapped gifts that if you do not wait on the Lord and if you do not trust the Lord and if you do not stand in faith, you will push in bitterness and anger back across the table to the Heavenly Father and say, what a disappointment. I ask you for something great and all you give me is a book of promises. It's not what I was expecting. It's not what I was praying for. You ask for something. It's not just about God giving it to you, but it's about Him preparing you to be able to handle it. Such was the case of Joseph and Potiphar's wife lies on him and he's thrown into prison for 13 years for a crime he did not commit. And while he's there, he makes friends with a butler and a baker. And he says, I'll interpret your dreams, but don't forget me. But they forgot him. But there came one day when Pharaoh had a dream and no one could interpret it. And the butler said, there's one man in the dungeon who can interpret dreams. And within 24 hours, Joseph was not only raised out of the prison, but Pharaoh said, I will make you second in the land. I'll give you the keys to the corn and you will save millions of lives and you will take us through the famine and you will sit in a powerful position in the world. The golden keys to the corn was in a package that you could never see God taking something so bad and so ugly, but out of it would fall the golden keys to keeping the the whole world alive. It's in the suffering, it's in the waiting that God begins to fashion and mold and shape you so that He can trust you with what you're asking Him to give you. God, I trust you even when I don't understand you, when I don't know anything and don't have any explanation for anything. My faith is in you. I know that if, if stuff comes and into my life, God sent it and He's going to take it and transform it for good.